Monarchs have a remarkable life cycle and migration cycle, and here to tell you all about it is Dr. Karen Oberhauser from the University of Minnesota's Monarch Lab. She studied monarchs for many years. Thanks, Margie. I'm here with students from Antietam School in Prince William County, and these students have become expert monarch scientists this fall as they've raised and released several monarch butterflies in their classes. I'm sure that many of you watching this broadcast have done the same. We're going to review the life cycle that the students have observed and talk about their annual life cycle that takes several generations of breeding, migrating, overwintering, and then migrating again. We have examples of every stage of the individual life cycle here, from the butterflies to the caterpillars and the eggs and the pupae. So we're going to start at the very beginning, and we'll start with Corbin. What's the stage that comes first, Corbin? The first stage of the monarch butterfly is the egg. Okay, really good. And so we have some eggs in here, and we can look really closely at these eggs. And can you tell me what you notice about these eggs, Tim? I noticed that they are very small and some of them already hatch. Okay, a few of them hatch. Great. Now this might be a little difficult for our audience to see. So we have a bigger picture of an egg right here. Um, monarch eggs, like Tim said, are very small, so females can lay lots of them. Sometimes over 1,000 if the females are kept in a cage where no predators can get to them and they have plenty to eat. The egg stage lasts about four to six days. So we'll move down to Miriam here now, and what's the next stage that comes after the egg stage, Miriam? The egg hatches and then there's a larva or a caterpillar. Okay, very good. You know both of the names for that, the larva or the caterpillar. So we have some little tiny larvae in here right now, and it's actually pretty hard to see these, but we have a picture right now of this. So this is the larva or the caterpillar that just hatched out of the egg. And does this look a little different to you, Tim, from a nor what, normal monarch that you've seen before? Yes, it does, because the real one is much smaller than it shows on the picture. Right, the real one is a lot smaller. And what happens? How do they change when they get a little bit bigger? They change by getting stripes by eating the milkweed. Right, really good. So Tim knows that the caterpillars, once they start eating the milkweed leaves, um, develop, get the pigment from the milkweed leaves that give them the typical black and white stripes. Okay, so we're going to look at some of the bigger caterpillars here, and I'm going to take one of these out and see if it can behave for me. Now, we can't tell if this is a boy or a girl yet, but we'll just hold this on. So here's a larger caterpillar right here, and we'll just hold them right here for the rest of our conversation. So we can look at that and think, what is the most important job for the caterpillars, Corbin? To eat and eat. Yeah, and why do they eat and eat so much? So then they can grow. Right, so that's the big job. Sometimes I think of monarch caterpillars as eating machines. Over the course of nine days to about two weeks, a monarch caterpillar can increase its body mass or its weight by 2,000 times. Now the skin of monarchs and other insects is a little like our bones. In fact, it's called an exoskeleton, which means outside skeleton. While monarchs are growing, their skin can't grow as much as they do, so they need to shed this skin. So can you tell me what the name for this process is when they're shedding their skin, Tim? The name of the process is molting, or an easier word for it is um, shedding its skin. Okay, very good. Molting or shedding their skin. So here's actually a close-up picture of a monarch caterpillar that shed its skin. And what we can see in this picture is that the old skin on the head is ready to fall off. So after the skin on the head falls off, so this little piece right here comes off, the caterpillar sheds the rest of its skin, sort of like you guys would take off one of your socks. But then it does something that with that skin that you would never do with a sock. Does anyone know what it does next? It eats its old skin. Right, so here we have a picture of a caterpillar that has just shed its skin. We can see the old skin right here, and it's going to turn around and eat that shed skin. Hopefully you never do that with your dirty socks. Okay, so the stages between the time that the monarch molts or shed its skin have a special name. Can you tell me what that name is, Tim? It's called an instar. Really good, yeah. The monarchs have um, instars that come in between the molts, and how many different instars do they have? 
There's five in stars. Go ahead. The first, the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Okay, very good. So here we see each of the larval in stars, and just to kind of for comparison here, you can see the egg up on the top. So this fifth instar is the same stage as this one right here in the picture. Okay, so what's the name for the next stage, Corbin? The chrysalis. Right, the chrysalis. Do you know another name for the chrysalis stage? Cocoon. Uh, actually, a cocoon is what moth, um, the moth pupa is called a cocoon. And another name for a, a, either a cocoon or a chrysalis is called the pupa. Now, sometimes people call this stage a resting stage, but there's actually a lot going on inside the pupa. The monarch's wings are developing, and we can see the wings actually developing right here, and we can see them on the pupae that we have in the cage here. The wings are developing from tiny wing buds that were present in the larva, and the legs, mouth parts, and antennae develop from organs that have very different forms in the larva. This process of changing from an egg to a larva to a pupa and then to an adult is called complete metamorphosis. Insects with complete metamorphosis have a pupa that doesn't need to eat or move, at least very much. But I don't know if you all knew this, that at most insect pupae can actually move a little bit while they're in the pupa stage. So all of these very complicated changes are taking place while the insect isn't moving around a lot or eating. And since they're pretty major changes, this is a good thing. And what's the last stage called? We can get the to Tim here. Butterfly. Yep. And here we have a picture of the adult butterfly. And what are some of the really important differences between the caterpillars and the adults, Miriam? The the adult has wings, and then the caterpillar didn't have wings. Right. And what do the wings allow it to do? It allows it to fly. Yep, it can fly and it can move a lot farther. And how about what it eats? It can't really eat any, it can't eat any solid foods, but because it, it's proboscis, it can only drink liquids. Excellent. Yep, it has a proboscis, so it can only drink liquids. And those liquids are called nectar. Now we know that nectar is basically sugar water. That's all it is. Could any of you live if all you ate was sugar water, like all you drank was pop? No, no, you wouldn't be able to grow, and if you got sick, you wouldn't be able to heal. But as an adult, the monarch isn't growing anymore, and it's not repairing its old body tissues very much. All it needs is energy, and it can get that pretty well from nectar. So let's move on. What we've done now is we've talked about the life cycle of an individual monarch. It